What up champs? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Cyril Zuma. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you press it and make sure you hit the bell notification icon so that you can receive notifications every time I drop an amazing video just like this one. Today, I am bringing this video to you from the Color Space Studios, which is based in Randburg. This is my studio, which I've built up over the past four months and I've always dreamt of ever since I started photography. The studio is available to all photographers. It comes with Godox lighting, some backdrops. It comes with a bathroom, parking also for five cars. We are in the heart of Randburg and our prices are very much reasonable. So make sure that you book us using studio at colorspace.co.za. Now that's it out the way, I wanna talk about what is actually in my camera case for 2022. Let's cue the intro. Before we go anywhere else, I wanna talk about this B&W International Outdoor Case. This is a Type 5000 case, which I got from Camera Tech. It really is an amazing case. It's really, really just so proof, like it's, yeah. This thing has carried me quite a lot everywhere. I've only had it for about a month or so, and it really, really has been helpful because my gear is quite safe in here. This is a Type 5000. This is what it looks like. And it really is just an amazing case built for somebody that wants to actually do something outdoors, somebody that travels quite a lot, which has been myself lately. Now, the Type 5000 is one of, just one of the sizes. I think, you know, it, it re really ranges in different sizes. This is the size that I really preferred and I thought that it could really fit my equipment and it fits it really well. I could though use a bigger case, but it just means that it will be a bit heavier. So I'm going to stick with the Type 5000 for now, which is really an amazing case. I am also able to lock it and put two locks onto the side over here, which is really, really, really great. Um, when I'm traveling and I really just want the safety. So that's my case. And now let's talk about what's inside this case. Let's open it up. And the first thing we see is this trekking harness. So this harness has really, really also been an amazing tool. I mean, this is how I wear it when I am at gigs. And it's really, really a helpful harness. Um, it comes onto the side here with two straps so I can actually mount my cameras onto here and onto here. And it really, really is great at the back here. You can see it's got a pocket and the pocket really, really works well. So that's a trekking harness, which I got from, also from camera, from camera tech, which is just down the road here in Randburg. So this harness is really, really helpful, man. I think, you know, um, if you are an events photographer, if you have somebody that wants to use two cameras and you need um, a strap that can actually handle two cameras, I really suggest this trekking harness over here. And you know, it comes with some pockets over here, as you can see, and it really is versatile and it is strong. I've shot with it quite a couple of times. In fact, for the past three, four years, I've been using this trekking harness. Really, really helpful tool, and I really would recommend to everybody. The next thing on my list is actually the cameras that I'm filming with right now. The first one is the Canon EOS R, which is just above me over here. The Canon EOS R is such an amazing, an amazing, amazing camera. I wrote down some specs, so I don't want to confuse myself and I think you guys should go with me on this one. So the, camera, the Canon EOS R is straight out the gate, a mirrorless camera. I really love the fact that it's mirrorless and there's no shutter count involved in this. It is a 30.3 megapixel camera, which takes amazing, amazing, amazing images. I've, as I said, I've been using it for the past two years now. Also really, really an amazing camera. I would recommend to everybody. It also shoots at eight frames, continuous shooting, which is really great. So when you hold it down, <laughs> and it can actually shoot eight frames continuous, which is really, really amazing for sports photography, for fast moving subjects, for performing artists that really jump up and down and move quite a lot. The camera also shoots in 4K at 10 bit. Now, I haven't really much explored the 4K. The last feature I wanna highlight about this camera is the wireless Bluetooth, uh, wireless um, and Bluetooth. So I'm able to send photos to myself 
wirelessly and also um, just to my phone using Bluetooth. So it really, really is an amazing camera. When I'm out working and a client wants photos for social media, I'm able to connect using the Canon app and actually fire it up. I am using with um, this camera right now above me here, I'm using it with the Canon 24-70 f2.8 Mark II lens. Oh my goodness, what a workhorse, what a versatile lens. That's the lens that everybody needs. You need a 24-70 in your life for the fact that you are able to zoom in and you're also able to zoom out and get quite a bit um, of, of space that you're around. I mean, look, I would really, really would love another lens, which is a bit wider, but I think that's just me really, really wanting to go wider. After shooting at Cotton Fest with a 16 to 35, I really fell in love with just wide and I would really, really love a wide lens. So yeah, if you're listening, please make sure that you get me a wide lens. I mean, I'll send you my details. <laughs> anyway, so the Canon 24-70 is really, really an amazing lens. I said it's a Mark II lens. And I also bought it from Camera Tech about two years back, paired with the Canon EOS R. Really, really amazing, amazing lens. The next thing I wanna talk about is my new baby. My new found love. It's not in this camera bag, but it would fit right here and my Canon EOS R would fit also just over here. And then I have the two lenses over here and I make space for these here. So the camera which I just got recently, and please make sure that you watch the video. I think it's up here, I'll put a link. I compared the Canon EOS R with this camera that I'm shooting with in front of me right now, which is the Sony a7 III. My goodness, what an amazing camera. What a beauty of a camera. For a while, I've really, really been wanting a better camera than the, 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 the EOS R, and I found the a7 III. Sony a7 III, so amazing. Anyway, if you wanna know about both the cameras, just a bit more specs, make sure that you just watch the video. I'll put a link again up here. Make sure you watch the video where I compare the two. So let me talk about the a7 III, which is my baby. If you go look on my social media, actually, or go look on YFM, I did a party with YFM just last weekend. It's called Life, hashtag Life. And I shot the photos. I had both the cameras with me and I used the a7 III so much more than a USR. And most of the photos I shot from this camera. What a beauty of a camera. I wrote down the specs for it also, so I'm gonna go through them and just tell you guys a little bit about the camera and what made me fall in love with it. So right out the gate, the A7 III is a full frame camera and it's not a mirrorless camera, just like the A7, you know, the, the, the Canon EOS R. It is 24.2 megapixels, which is just below the, the EOS R. You know, doesn't make much of a difference from what I've seen so far. It can shoot 10 frames per second at high speed continuous. Now. That's even better than the EOS R. It literally like, brrr, it, it's fast. <laughs> it is blazing fast. Um, and I tested it out this past weekend just to see what it's like. I had KO in front of me and he was moving quite a lot up and down and just open it and, brrr, and the focus was so amazing. The um, A7 III also comes with a uh, Bluetooth connection. So I'm also able to send, my, send photos to my phone and send it to client right away. What a beauty of a camera. Honestly, I have not used the EOS R ever since I got the A7 III. Maybe that's just me being too excited about the camera. I don't know, I don't know, but you guys make sure that you watch the video so that you can tell me if I'm just being a little too dramatic, but this camera is a workhorse and it is amazing. The lens that I've got on the A7 III is another beauty. You know when they talk about Borke? Borke, Borke, oof, oof. Ooh, you know the background, Borke is like when that background just is non-existent. So I've got a Sigma 85 1.4 art lens. Oh my goodness. Paired with the Sony a7 III, they just don't miss. It, the photos are so sharp. It is an amazing lens. I used an 85mm, the Sigma 85mm, quite a while back when I was doing um, Ultra Festival 2020, just before lockdown in February. I used a Sigma 85 mil and I promised myself I would get it again and I got it and what an amazing lens. So it also fits in my bag here. It is sharp, it is amazing. I would definitely recommend it. I got the camera and the lens from Outdoor Photo in Pretoria. It was a second hand camera, which was really, really amazing. In fact, no, was it a second hand? Yeah, the camera was a second hand. The lens was brand new. 
The camera was for about 25,000 Rand, 26,000 Rand, and the lens was somewhere around 20,000 Rand also. Really, really amazing combo between the two. I would recommend to anybody and everybody. Now let's move on to the next items that are in my bag right here. The other thing I have, which is for the Canon EOS R, is this amazing little beauty over here. This is a Godox V1 lens. Really, really amazing lens. Um, I've been using it for the past also a year or so. I got a tip from Pilani actually. So what's nice about these is that you actually, these batteries, you know, they last so much longer. And also at the same time, I think, you know, you can actually exchange a lot of batteries. Instead of you having those rechargeable batteries, which you always have to put in those A3s, they're annoying, get rid of those things. This is the baby, this is, this is the future. I mean, I think I've gone through three or four shoots using this thing and I really, really haven't charged it again. So the Godox V1 for Canon really is amazing. I know that you can get it for other brands too. It goes in my bag right here and goes everywhere with me because you never know when you might need some light. The next thing I want to talk about is this Benro filter. This is an ND filter and it's a non-stop uh, filter. So it's got nine stops. What's really, really amazing about it is that, you know, when you turn this direction a little bit, it closes up and opens up. So when you are shooting outdoors, um, you will notice quite a lot. If somebody has clouds and it's a really sunny day, it's harsh. It's really like hitting here. And somebody happens to, you can see the clouds, everything is perfect in, defini in definition. They used an ND filter. Now there's different stops that you can use. I've got a nine stop ND filter. I've got this from a shop in Four Ways Crossing. Um, that was the best price I could get for this non-stop ND filter, Benro. Really, 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 really amazing. I would recommend you get an ND filter for when you're shooting outside so that you can just compensate for a little bit and still keep your shutter speed at a normal shutter speed. Normally we need to compensate our shutter speed to like uh, you know, 5, 500, 1000, 2000, even 8000, whatever. But with an ND filter, you can keep your shutter speed at a proper uh, shutter speed, even for video specifically, at a proper shutter speed, so that you can actually um, get the true definition of what's happening outside. So Benro ND filter, really, really amazing. I would recommend to everybody. And the next thing I wanna talk about is this Peli case. This is a Peli a case and it actually holds memory cards. <laughs> I got it recently, very decent. So most of my memory cards, one of them is in here. Two of them are in the Sony a7 III, which actually takes two memory cards. Um, and then another one is probably lying around somewhere in two of the computers that I'm using. But yeah, I would really recommend a Peli case. It really, really is safe. You can keep all your stuff on here. I got this from Camera Stuff, which is in Randburg. Definitely get yourself one of these babies over here. It goes in my case too, and that's what in my case for 2022. Now let's go on to the next equipment, which is in, actually in my case. This over here is the Godox V1 lighting kit. Now this lighting kit is for this camera over here. Um, oh, sorry, actually, it's actually for this um, flash over here, which is the Godox V1. You have things like the diffuser over here, which you put in front. And let me just show you what it actually looks like. So you can actually diffuse your light over here and that's what it will look like. So your light is a little bit more diffused. You also have this panel here, which has got a black and white side to it. Really, really great. I think it's useful for when you wanna flash light and hit it that way. It really, really is helpful. I've also got some barn doors, which are, are pretty cool. I mean, when you, wanna, when you want to direct light, when you want to direct your light somewhere else rather, you can actually just use one of these over here and it directs it straight into there. I don't know when I'll ever use this, but um, it really is over here and I really, really enjoy the fact that it's here. The kit also comes with these filters over here, which are really, really amazing. Um, it's four of them. I got this from <laughs> a fellow photographer actually. She was selling these and didn't need hers and didn't need it anymore and wasn't using flash. And I said, I will gladly take it off your hands. The next good toy which I want to talk about is this Rode Mic Go. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This needs to be caught in focus. You see this over here? What an amazing, amazing. This is actually what I'm using to record over here, 
So I've got it on a Sony A7 III. It's really, really easy. I just clip it on, clip it off, and I plug it onto there. It comes with a few cables, so charging cables. Um, and it comes one of these cables over here. You can actually also use this Rode Mic Go to podcast. So I'm a podcaster. And so when I'm on the go and I'm everywhere else, I can actually put it in this case over here. So everything fits in this little case over here. And it's got a Velcro and it goes into my bag. I got this from where? Where did I get this? I think I got this online. I just cannot remember where I actually got this Rode Mic Go, but they're really much available. You can get one from Take A Lot too, which is actually much cheaper than most stores. And the audio quality has not disappointed me at all. I've been happy with the audio quality and I think it's something that I'll be using going forward. I'm going to Cape Town now for a week and that's the mic that I'm going to be using. It lasts me quite a while when it's fully charged. So I've got a receiver and a transmitter over there on the camera and it's pure clean. I mean, I've connected it to this camera before and also it has worked out really, really well. Now, another toy which is in my bag and I carry it with me whenever I'm going most places is this little baby over here. Now, I bought this Maverick DJI drone. I mean, this is a Maverick Mini, by the way. I bought this drone also about a few years back, maybe one or two years back. I've used it quite a bit. Um, it's a really, really light drone, and I think you know everybody should definitely buy themselves one of these. I know Andile just got himself one of these, and um, he really will enjoy one of these. I got this from Apple secondhand. It comes with a controller over here. So this is what the controller would look like. You would set it up, put your smartphone over here, and you basically sort it and you can transmit. Um, this controller and or this drone can fly for 30 minutes. Well, give or take less than that. I think safe zone is probably about 20 minutes flying time that you can get out of this drone here. So I've mounted up my phone over here. It comes with the cables and some controls that you can put on here. It is always in my case, in case I need a top photo, in case I need a photo, an establishing photo of the city, in case I need an establishing video of the city. I actually have it with an extra battery, which is really, 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 really helpful to have an extra battery on one of these. As I said, the flight time is 30 minutes and 30 minutes isn't really enough to, to be flying in the air sometimes. You don't really get the, the content that you want, especially with wind. Oh my goodness, with wind, it makes it even harder. So it looks like that's all that's in my, in my case right now. I have the chargers for all the cameras. So this is the charger for the Sony, this side here, and this is a charger for the Canon. Uh, both of them, I keep them in my bag at all times. I also have this little nice tool over here, actually. <laughs> but yeah, this is to clean your camera. This is a nice wind blower. I've got a duster also over here to clean my gear wherever I am going. It really, really is helpful to have a duster with you at all times so that you can clean whatever it is you want to clean. Um, and then I have cables. So all of these cables over here are to either charge the batteries for my Weeble S, which is a Xeon Weeble S stabilizer. I take that with me. That's another item that I always keep with me at all times in case I need to do stable video. This over here is also just the plates that I use on there. And this is a charger that comes with uh, the, for the camera. And here's another plate which really has been helpful. I'm, I've been able to put it on the A7 III and the EOS R also. And of course, the long charging cable for the A7 III, which is really, really long. I actually want to buy those two chargers. I think it's like a little pod like this. I can actually plunk both of them in there. This is to charge the, um, the Godox V1. Um, it uses a USB-C to charge it. So you basically put your, your, your battery over there and it basically charges it for itself. I've always got extra batteries with me at all times for the Sony and for the Canon. It really is important to have more batteries. I'm not sure where the other ones are, but it really is important to have a lot of batteries for your cameras. And you really thank yourself once you actually carry a lot of batteries because so often you find that like, this camera has disappointed me quite a few times where I didn't look at the battery and it's about to die. And so therefore I lose out on content and getting cut of stuff. But anyway, I'm rambling on. That is actually what is in my camera case and what is in my camera bag for 2022. 
I went through the recap, I showed you my cameras, I showed you some of the gear that's inside here, I showed you my V1, I showed you my, my drone over here, which is a Maverick Mini drone, but I have not showed you my MacBook Air M1, which has been also so helpful for me when I'm actually going out to shoot. So let me show you the MacBook M1. Yay, this is the little baby over here. This is my MacBook M1. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying it actually. What a beauty. Currently, I've got two Laser, Laser, Leica um, hard drives, a four terabyte and a one terabyte. That's also always in my case. So make sure that you also have two or three of these lying around uh, with you at all times where you back up and you also got new content. Currently, I've got this tethered up, so I don't want to open it up too much, but this is the MacBook Air M1. Oh my goodness. This is the little baby that I just got recently and I'm really, really enjoying it. It's so much faster, it's so much easier in editing and I've really been enjoying it, man. So I've also been able to use it quite a lot when tethering and um, it really works well with me and I would recommend any photographer to get themselves the M1 and hopefully the M2, which is coming out not so long from now. Just keep an eye out for it. Anyway, that's what's in my case for 2022. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, guys, please make sure that you subscribe over here. Make sure you hit the subscription button button and make sure you hit the bell notification icon, man, so that you can receive notifications every single time I drop a video just like this one over here. Make sure that you are also following me on Instagram and Twitter at Cyril Zuma on both the channels. Thank you for watching the chat today's channel. I really rambled on about what's in my camera kit, but that's what's in my bag. When you book me, you know exactly what kind of work I'm going to be producing. I do have a wish list. I would definitely love to change the USR to another A7 III. So that's possibly coming in the next one to two years. And I would like to get another lens for the Sony A7 III because I feel like I need a wider lens. So a 24 to 70, I'm really, really looking out for it. If you've got it, a second hand or brand new, please let me know so that I can buy it from you. I really, really need a wider lens. As soon as possible, actually. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.